FoxBangor.com. More people choose Good Morning Maine. Today on Good Morning Maine, Craig's going to scroll for no, me. It's not there, is it? I have to scroll up. Okay. Hold on, stick. You guys talk amongst yourselves. Today on Good Morning Maine. There we go. A pilot escaped serious injuries following a plane crash on Swans Island. Helps when the words are actually on the screen, huh? Mm -hmm. Plus, the dust is settling on the decision to outlaw loitering on medians in Bangor, but some say it's a violation of constitutional rights. And employees of Maine's Gambling Control Board say a hostile work environment has prevented them from doing their jobs. Good morning, and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. Is it a Monday morning? Feels like a Monday. I don't know suddenly. what day it is. I don't think it is. Yeah. I think it's Wednesday or something like that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Thank you for joining us, everyone. We'll have all the day's news coming up in just a few moments. But we're going to start with a check of the forecast, as we always do. And it looks like a pretty nice day ahead today. Partly cloudy, so we should see some sunshine as the day rolls along. And as we've seen just about every day over the last few weeks, a chance of thunderstorms, too, later Seems on. Seems like it. Yeah. Yep. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Need the perfect fit for your new summer footwear? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. All righty, here we go. This morning we had some showers that have been passing through. We're going to be pushing those off to the east. We'll get some sunshine going today along with some passing clouds and a few showers and maybe a rumble of thunder could develop as we get some of that daytime heating going this afternoon. But for now, though, here's a big picture. Just some showers developing going from the west and going to the east. We'll be getting nose out of here pretty quickly. And then that small afternoon chance will be greeting us. So future cast otherwise party cloudy today. There's that chance for a shower or storm later this afternoon. Tonight mostly cloudy and better chances for showers and storms on the way, especially as we head towards early Thursday morning. As for the winds though, here we go. They will be increasing to around 15 miles per hour at times. For now though, we don't have any advisories in effect along the coast that may change coming up later on today. So we'll make sure to keep an eye on that. So for today we have middle 80s party cloudy, a few thunderstorms possible this afternoon with a southwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. So lower 60s tonight, showers and thunderstorms likely with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Some heavy downpours could occur with these storms as well. And for tomorrow, we have scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way yet again. We will have dry hours as well. Highs in the upper 70s and that west wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. That early forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a partly cloudy sky. Temperatures overall in the middle 80s. A few showers and storms possible during the afternoon as well. Well, your full five day forecast is coming up. Thank you, Devin. We'll check in with you a little later on. We begin with some startling video of a plane crashing on Swans Island. No one from the Hancock County Sheriff's Office was available for comment, but take a look. A post from Sharon Tozier Gilly on Facebook shows the plane crash on what she said was her property. Miraculously, according to that post, no one was hurt and there was no major damage to her property. The plane appeared to struggle to gain altitude before crashing into some trees and narrowly avoiding a home. We will bring you any new details as we get them. Meanwhile, a man was killed when a retaining wall collapsed on him in Brownville. According to the Piscataquis County Sheriff's Office, 67-year-old Stephen Lane of Glenburn was working, working on the retaining wall along Railroad Avenue around 2.45 Tuesday afternoon when the wall suddenly gave out and collapsed. EMS personnel tried to revive Lane, but they were unsuccessful. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The Sheriff's Office and OSHA are now both investigating that incident. A man from the town of Paris has been arrested after he allegedly assaulted an off-duty police officer following a traffic incident. Police say it happened last night around 6 o'clock in the town of Norway. Investigators say Oxford Police Department Reserve Officer Korea, Joe Korea, was outside his vehicle on Crockett Ridge Road when he was hit by another vehicle driven by 29-year-old Michael Carlton. A fight started between the two following the collision and Carlton was eventually arrested. He's now charged with aggravated assault and reckless conduct with a dangerous weapon. Officer Correa was taken to the hospital to have surgery for non-life-threatening injuries. Well, two people are facing drug charges as a result of a months-long investigation by Waterville Police. Major Jason Longley says 24-year-old Anthony Carey of New York and 41-year-old Kelly Gords of Waterville were both arrested after officers executed a search warrant at 82 Silver Street. 
According to Longley, officers found almost 900 grams of cocaine base, 152 grams of fentanyl, and a handgun. Kerry and Gords are charged with aggravated trafficking of scheduled drugs, illegal possession of a firearm, and also criminal conspiracy. Both are scheduled to appear in court in August. Authorities have determined that a man found dead in Union over the weekend died from natural causes. The state police and Knox County Sheriff's Department began investigating Saturday after 40-year-old Jonathan Dodge was found dead. Officials learned that Dodge had been injured in a fall the previous day, and the medical examiner's office has since determined his death was not suspicious and that he died of natural causes. Well, crews had to perform a high-angle rescue to reach a man who fell while rock climbing in Acadia National Park. Officials say the 24-year-old was near the South Bubble Trail when he slid and fell about 50 feet. The National Park Service and Mountain Desert Island Search and Rescue responded to the scene. Pollock says they used a litter to evacuate the man from where he landed. She says he was able to walk off the trail with rangers and took himself to the hospital. During Monday night's Bangor City Council meeting, the city passed an ordinance that prohibits loitering along narrow medians on some busy roads. This new ruling is already sparking reaction from advocates who say it violates First Amendment rights. Our Grace Blanchard has the details. Loitering along medians has become a common occurrence throughout Bangor. Growing safety concerns have led the city to take action. 24-180 has passed. Next item. The Bangor City Council voted to amend its prior loitering ban, which will make it illegal to stand on medians less than six feet wide. This, to me, is not something about limiting free speech. It's about being proactive and creating safe, safer places in Bangor for both pedestrians and for drivers. Those against the ban believe it would unfairly target unhoused people who panhandle on the medians. Our government should not be in the business of banning free speech whether it's on sidewalks or medians or public parks. The ACLU of Maine did not confirm whether they would be moving forward with legal action, but they say nothing is off the table. Issuing fines and tickets for people who are in public view um, will do nothing to address the long-term problem. Bangor police say the provision will not take effect until 10 days after it was passed, at which point they will begin enforcing it. The majority of the time, the people are very receptive. We have issued a couple of criminal summonses for things like that for people that, the, you know, it's repeat offender and it's not, hey, caught you for the second time. It's, we've had this discussion four or five times. Our team spent much of the afternoon searching for people loitering on the newly banned areas, but the usually busy medians like the one here along the Auburn Road were empty. And we do have accidents at those and the big thing is we just don't want somebody who's out there not really involved in traffic in any way getting injured or even killed. In Bangor, Grace Blanchard, ABC 7 and Fox 22 News. We know summer is officially here when Bangor opens the city's swimming pools for the season. And then the city announced both the Dakin Pool and the Beth Panko Aquatic Center will be opening today. You can visit the Bangor Parks and Rec Department website for all the hours and pricing. Good news for all the local kids and families out there that want to cool off. Yeah. Um, it only costs a couple of bucks. Some cases it's only like a dollar too for, yeah. for residents. So. Yeah, especially at Dakin. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm -hmm. All right. Something caught in my throat there. Yeah. All right. The time now is 6.08. Coming up next on Good Morning Maine. In what they're calling obvious retaliation, gambling inspectors are saying that unilateral changes made by Director Champion are making much needed um, oversight more difficult. We'll have the story coming up. But first, another check of that weather forecast. Today looks like a partly cloudy day with a chance of a few thunderstorms. Highs around 85 degrees. Showers and thunderstorms overnight. Lows dropping down to the low 60s. Tomorrow, yes, more showers and thunderstorms on the way with highs near 77. We'll be right back. Roto-Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydrojetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Roto-Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Roto-Rooter. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC 7. Here's this week's featured deal. 
The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m., a limited supply available half-off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. It's Judge Judy's greatest hits with classics like... That's ridiculous. That's a lot of baloney. Judge Judy on ABC7. Well, this is it, Ryan. What do you think? Impressive, Pat. Ryan Seacrest is getting ready to take the wheel. We play ourselves on TV. This is what you're like in real life, in the wild? Well, not dressed like this. <laughs> Ryan Seacrest joins Vanna White this fall on Wheel of Fortune. Weekdays at 7 on ABC7. Gambling inspectors in the state are accusing their boss of creating a hostile work environment and changing their work schedule out of retaliation. They say his actions are affecting not only their jobs, but significantly delaying some operations at Maine's two casinos. Our Augusta reporter Corey Bouchard spoke to inspectors, union representatives, and the commissioner of the Department of Public Safety to learn more. This occurred um, as part of retaliation from the director, Champion, against the inspectors following a grievance they filed. I don't know how you can call it anything but retaliation. Gail Craig is a gambling inspector at Hollywood Slots and Casino. She's talking about a number of changes made by the main gambling control unit's director, Milton Champion, without oversight of the gambling control board. Milton is accused of changing the schedules of casino gambling inspectors from a 10-hour shift four days a week to an eight-hour shift five days a week. Before the changes, there was an inspector present at each casino nearly 24-7. Now they say there's no inspector during overnight hours or on Sundays and Mondays. Removing us two days a week is really impacting the casinos. And it also, as far as I'm concerned, the public would be interested because when people voted to bring casinos into Maine, they voted for strict oversight, and he's removing it. Greg says without the inspectors present, there are many tasks that cannot be completed according to board rules and Maine law, including aspects of repairing, moving, and installing slot machines, temporary licensing of employees that forget their credentials, and even helping people who wish to self-exclude themselves from Maine casinos due to problem gambling. Department of Public Safety Commissioner Michael Sostrick defended Champion's actions to the board on Tuesday. And I'm incredibly confident and comfortable with where we are with the decisions that have been made. They're lawful and there are definitely within the authority of the gambling control unit and the director to make. Both Craig and St. Amon allege Director Champion has a history of skillfully navigating around board rules, such as submitting bills to the legislature without prior knowledge of the board. What they really want to see change is oversight. By removing gaming control unit oversight from these various processes, he is trying to consolidate power. We tried to speak with Director Champion at the board meeting, but he declined to be interviewed. In Augusta, I'm Corey Bouchard for HC7 and Fox 22 News. Well, on a much brighter note, the Old Town High School pool is now back open to the public with an admission cost of just 25 cents. The pool hasn't been open to the public in roughly eight years now. The Old Town Orno YMCA covered the cost for much needed renovations, including improvements to the handicap accessibility. The Y does have its own swimming pool, but that's strictly used for aquatic therapy. Leaders at the Y say they're seeing a great community response, thanks to, in part, to the retro price point. Growing up in Old Town, this pool was always accessible to me. Um, and this was something that the YMCA in Old Town is all about community, so we wanted to give back to the community and see what we could do and uh, looking forward on uh, our aquatics plans moving forward as a Y. Pool will be open Monday through Friday from 9 to 3 each day. Wilcox says there will be some events this summer during which the pool will be open in the evenings as well. This might, or excuse me, this week you might notice a group of kids doing yard work around the Orrington area. From lawn care to home repair, the Reason Youth Group at the East Orrington Congregational Church is on a week-long mission to help their community. The youth group, led by 5th through 12th graders, is now in its second year. It makes our heart glad to be able to reach out to some of the people who we might not otherwise get a chance to talk to and learn from. and and help. It's our way of sharing Christ's love with the community. 
While they learn useful hands-on skills, Fogg says they're also learning how to work with each other. Very nice. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All right, the time now is 6.15. After the break, our neighbors in the Midwest have received some destructive flooding, which is now reportedly moving closer to the Northeast. We'll have the report, plus our local weather forecast, coming up on Good Morning Maine. One of my favorite parts of this job is the people that I work with. We are on the main turnpike. We're all regular people. We're moms, dads. In the construction zone, the speed really is probably the biggest issue. Average speed is probably closer to 70, 75. Sometimes it's literally just a plastic cone that is separating us from live traffic. Makes the hair on the back of your neck stand up a little bit. One thing I'd like to ask of the motorist is just to give us a break, slow down. I want to get home and see my wife and kids tonight. After an accident, the insurance company often wants to rush you into accepting their fair offer. Don't sign away your rights. I didn't trust the insurance company. They were wanting to settle fast and cheap. How much is your case worth? It's probably worth more than you've been told. I called Joe. I found out what my case was really worth. Say yes to maximum compensation, to everything you deserve. Call Joe, the law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Adding comfort and beauty to your home for less is as easy as one, two, three. During Renewal by Anderson's easy three Z replacement window event, the time to act is now. Because Renewal by Anderson is making it easy and affordable with huge discounts on our exclusive custom replacement windows and our doors, along with special financing options so affordable you won't want to miss out on this event. And to top it all off, professional installation by our certified master installers is always included. Like we said, easy three Z. Call today. Now to the latest on the damaging storm across the upper Midwest, now moving towards the Northeast. It comes as officials keep a close eye on that dam in Minnesota as well, as it remains at risk of a total failure despite falling water levels. ABC's Andrew Dimbert has the details. This morning, a closer look at devastation in the Midwest after days of heavy rain caused historic flooding. In South Dakota, the Big Sioux River and McCook Lake are finally receding, revealing an apocalyptic scene in North Sioux City. A number of homes completely destroyed, others barely hanging on. The water's tearing apart roads, some caving in, taking cars with them. This SUV teetering on the edge. Officials say a temporary levee built over the weekend prevented further disaster. If the berm was not there, the residential sections further south of the industrial park, uh, they would have also seen a lot of water. In southern Minnesota, nervous residents wait as the Rapidan Dam is still in imminent failure condition. On Monday, the flooding breaching the western bank of the dam, and officials say the erosion is ongoing. And more severe storms in the region. In Chicago, strong winds ripped down trees. It sounded like this giant crash, and I assumed for a second that it was just our patio umbrella, but it wasn't. And at least eight twisters were reported across Iowa and Nebraska. Heavy hail, too leaving thousands without power. And now those storm systems are moving east. Strong winds, hail, and isolated tornadoes are possible from Albany to Washington, D.C. today. The nation's capital will also be feeling the heat today, where temperatures could reach 99. Honest Abe succumbing to the D.C. heat, the sun melting the head off this wax version of the Lincoln Memorial. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Well, it gets so uncomfortable down there, too. Just... Would not want to be in Washington right now. Yeah. Yeah. He lost his head. I'm just still caught up on that. <laughs> hey, as far as our weather is concerned, it looks like we'll have warm temperatures again, but it will be partly cloudy, so you can get out there and still enjoy the sunshine. Yeah. Yesterday was gorgeous. Yeah, it was lovely. Yeah. Yep. All right, here's Devin Biggs with that forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Need the perfect fit for your new summer footwear? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. All righty, wave heights are down now, just at around three feet according to the buoys out there, five feet, even six feet farther out towards sea, though, to show you that six foot wave height there it is right about in there. But for now, we have no advisories in effect along the coast that may change later today with some gusty winds that will be on the way. Water temperatures, though, again, there's 
still down in the 50s and even some 60s. So if you're thinking about going to the ocean soon, I would exercise some caution with that as the water temperature is still rather cool at this time. We have showers that have been passing through this morning, tracking from the west and going toward the east. We'll keep that going this morning. Later this afternoon, we'll be partly cloudy with a few showers and thunderstorms that may develop again with the daytime heating. But for now, though, this is the energy tracking from the west to the east, giving us some showers this morning. Those will get out of here pretty quickly. We'll get some daytime heating going. Then maybe a little bit more development during the afternoon period. But for now, though, a part of the cloudy sky for most of the day. There's a few showers and storms possible again during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, increasing clouds, good chances for showers and storms. Locally heavy downpours cannot be ruled out with those either as we head towards Thursday morning. We'll get that through the maybe a little bit more afternoon development on the way yet again as we head towards late Thursday afternoon into the early evening time frame as well. And notice those continue maybe an early Friday morning before those finally begin to get out of here. As for the rainfall in total, again, locally heavy downpours can't be ruled out, but in general, around a half inch to three quarters of an inch are possible between now and early Friday morning before all this gets out of here. So some decent rainfall on the way for us yet again. Let's talk about some dew points. So again, dew points, not too bad out there. They might be a little bit up there today overall in the lower 60s, so just slightly humid out there. But notice so later into the day on Thursday, those get back down to the comfortable territory. Now possibly Saturday into Sunday. Here we go again. Dew points back up in the lower 70s yet again. So make sure you're ready for that. But otherwise, for today, here we go. Middle 80s, partly cloudy. A few afternoon thunderstorms are possible. Some showers could occur as well. With a southwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. By tonight, lower 60s showers and thunderstorms are likely. Locally heavy downpours could occur with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow, we have scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way yet again. Dry hours will be expected as well. Highs in the upper 70s and that west wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Lots of sunshine on Friday with highs in the mid 70s, lower 70s for your Saturday under a mostly cloudy sky. More showers and thunderstorms on Sunday with highs in the low 80s. Comfy, cozy, relaxing. Not Joe. Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find rockers, recliners, sofas, and easy chairs. Quality furniture, affordable prices. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. This summer, savor that longest-lasting bowl of chowder, that longest-lasting fireworks show, and that longest-lasting vacation. And now, at the Toyota Summer Sales Event, savor that great deal from the longest-lasting brand. You can get low 4.75 for 60 on an all-wheel drive RAV4 hybrid or gas model which could save you up to $1,600. Plus, get two years no-cost maintenance. Savor the summer and see your New England Toyota dealer, your all-wheel drive headquarters. Toyota, let's go places. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. These local businesses would like to wish you a happy Independence Day, along with safe and fun celebrations all summer long. Hanks Husqvarna is your trusted full-line Husqvarna dealer, offering you everything you need for your outdoor projects. From high-performance lawn tractors and zero-turn mowers to chainsaws, trimmers, battery-powered and powerful snowblowers, we have just what you need. Every piece of equipment is fully set up, serviced, and ready for use by our certified Husqvarna technician. And all sales are backed by our in-house Husqvarna warranty. For parts, service, or new equipment sales, make your way to Hanks Husqvarna in Carmel or Newport. Durable, sturdy, stylish, not Joe, Joe's Furniture. Joe's Furniture Warehouse in Newport is the place to find solid wood, built to last, made in main dressers, bureaus, and nightstands. Not your average Joe. Joe's Furniture Warehouse, Grogan Avenue in Newport. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Federal judges have put the brakes on one of President Biden's plans to tackle student debt, saying the administration does not have the authority to wipe out billions of dollars in debt. Only Congress can. As Fox News' correspondent Rebecca Castor reports, this puts debt relief for millions of Americans in jeopardy. It's a campaign promise President Biden keeps trying to deliver on. 
But once again, one of his plans to forgive billions of dollars in student debt has been blocked by federal courts. The president has no textual basis in law for this plan, and I'm not going to let Joe Biden saddle working Missouri families with Ivy League debt. Missouri's attorney general is behind one of several lawsuits filed against Biden's income-driven repayment plan known as SAVE, which aimed to wipe out remaining balances and cut payments for millions of borrowers. We know Congress has the power of the purse, not the president. A federal judge in Missouri agreed and ordered the Biden administration to stop further cancellations of student debt under this program. Millions of borrowers were also less than a week away from seeing their monthly bill drop by half. But a federal judge in Kansas says the White House can't do that either. This is likely going to the Supreme Court. The White House plans to appeal both decisions. But the last time President Biden took a massive student debt relief plan to the Supreme Court, it was struck down. And these courts saying it's not that different. That is, you're still trying to do something that I don't see any evidence that Congress gave you authority to do. These rulings do not impact President Biden's aid package for student debt forgiveness under the Higher Education Act. That plan is still in the approval process. In Washington, Rebecca Castor, Fox News. Julian Assange breathing a sigh of relief after leaving court Wednesday a free man. The WikiLeaks founder on Wednesday pleaded guilty to a felony charge under the Espionage Act as part of a deal with the U.S. Justice Department. The legal proceedings capping off more than a decade's worth of legal drama for Assange, who was accused of illegally accessing and distributing U.S. military intelligence information. Assange pleaded guilty in a federal court located in the northern Mariana Islands an American Commonwealth in the Pacific Oceans. He was then sentenced to time he already served in a British prison where he was locked up for the past five years. Assange can now officially return to his home of Australia and won't face additional prison time. Well, U.S. journalist Evan Gerskovic's espionage trial is in Russia began on Wednesday behind closed doors. Uh, he briefly appeared before journalists in a courtroom standing in a glass box. The 32-year-old Wall Street Journal reporter is accused of spying for the CIA. His trial comes more than a year after he was arrested. Gerskovic, his employer and the U.S. government deny the allegations. If convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. Thousands of protesters storming the parliament building in Kenya, setting part of it on fire. The violence erupted as lawmakers voted on measures to raise taxes. The violence left several protesters dead as Kenyans have been protesting a slate of new tax hikes that lawmakers passed before fleeing the parliament building through tunnels. It still needs to be signed by Kenyan President William Ruto. Young people in the East African nation have been frustrated with soaring prices and helped elect Ruto after he promised economic relief. President Ruto was not in Nairobi during the unrest, but condemned the rioting. Well, federal investigators have released their final report on the toxic train wreck in East Palestine, Ohio. The report shows what caused the disaster last year, and investigators were critical of the railway Norfolk Southern in its response. Here's ABC's Alex Presha with more. This morning, the NTSB with a scathing report on the East Palestine train derailment, detailing a laundry list of failures that led to the crash and put people needlessly at risk. The absence of a fat fatality or injury doesn't mean the presence of safety. Federal investigators reaffirmed an overheated wheel bearing led to the derailment of more than three dozen cars. The agency says the situation was made worse by a series of missteps by Norfolk Southern Railways, faulty track sensors, and delayed communication about the toxic cargo on board that train. Investigators say a wheel bearing on car 23 overheated, sparking a fire. And a trackside sensor did not properly register the bearing's temperature and warn the crew, despite that wheel bearing being on fire for miles. How does a bearing that was on fire only read 103 degrees Fahrenheit over the Salem hot bearing detector? Another failure, according to the NTSB, happened when firefighters showed up to battle the blaze unprepared because the fire destroyed the train's hazardous chemical placards. It took Norfolk Southern an hour to alert first responders about the toxic chemicals they were exposed to. The NTSB also pointed out it was unnecessary for Norfolk Southern to recommend firefighters perform a, quote, vent and burn, which potentially caused further health hazards. But Chairwoman Jennifer Homedy spent the closing minutes of the hours-long meeting tearing into Norfolk Southern, alleging the railroad operator delayed sharing data, cut corners, and even threatened NTSB personnel to, quote, move on from this during the investigation. Norfolk Southern's actions were unconscionable, 
And I want everyone who works with the NTSB, everyone who works for the, with the NTSB on current investigations and future investigations to understand this. We are impervious to anything but the truth. Alex Perche, ABC News, Columbus, Ohio. And in a statement, Norfolk Southern said it appreciates the NTSB's investigation and the acknowledgement of the steps Norfolk Southern has taken to improve safety. In April, the rail operator agreed to a $600 million settlement. And coming up on the second half of the newscast, the conditions this summer have chalked up to an early strawberry season. We'll hear just how those conditions are. Plus that full weather forecast coming up on Good Morning Maine. There are plenty of good reasons to have a dock at your camp or lakefront home and to choose a Shoremaster premium dock system or floating poly dock system from Hammond Lumber Company. Lightweight and durable Shoremaster high grade aluminum docks are easy to install and maintain and poly docks are perfect for dealing with deeper fluctuating water levels. Both offer a wide range of available configurations. There's a Shoremaster or poly dock system that's right for you and you'll find it at Hammond Lumber Company. When RK Variety in Hamden wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. RK Variety is more than just a convenience store, offering fresh cooked meals that don't break the bank, gasoline for your mean machines, or beer and wine so your night is fine. Stop by today. People ask me all the time are those commercials really true? Does La Arena Associates really get all of those clients, all of those big settlements? Yes, we do. We really have gotten millions of dollars for Mainers hurt by commercial vehicles. And the insurance companies know when you call the twos, we're going to fight for you. And you know what else is true? I really am standing on top of this big truck. Hurt by a big truck? Call the twos. We win for you. Here at GMA, we have two words for you, giant pandas. And this week, Janae Norman takes you to what's called the panda capital of the world in China. This is Bali. As two pandas get ready to make the trip to the U.S. Pandas, GMA, this week. When it comes to the whole home heat pump rebates from Efficiency Maine, there's money on the table for everyone. And the experts at Valley Home Services are here to help you get your share. Even if you've received a rebate in the past, you can still take advantage of this program with a new Fujitsu heat pump for your whole house. And no matter your income, there's a rebate for you. Let the folks at Valley Home Services lay out a Fujitsu heat pump plan for you so you can start saving on heating and cooling for your home. Don't leave money on the table. Call Valley Home Services today and get your rebate instantly. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Welcome back, everyone. Today is Wednesday, June 26th, 2024. This is also the National Day of Joy. Are you feeling joyous, Craig? Working on it. I'm working on it. <laughs> That's a good answer. Still kind of sleepy. We're, we're kind of grumpy this yeah, morning. I'm, I'm seeking joy you, and happiness. You have a toothache, a I headache. I do. Yeah. You're kind of stressed out. <laughs> I'm good. Well, it's the National Day of Joy, so yeah, I got a new haircut, so that's, there you go. that's a positive. That looks so, nice. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Brandy, by the way. Yeah, nice. So, yeah. Let's see. There we go. See, We're I'm working full on of it. Joy. <laughs> People celebrate this day by finding happiness outside of the norms that society calls for. The search for joy is often attributed to material possessions, especially in our society, but often neglects family and friends. This holiday was created by caregivers who realized how important it is for folks to be joyful. They find happiness in the little things of life and don't base their joy on things like wealth or prestige. Yeah, they, they were, these are specifically people caring for seniors who oh. later on in life, you know, they, they've already figured it out. They're not right. worried about getting the latest TV or car. Right. You know, it's little things like enjoying a nice afternoon or you know, some flowers or something like that, or just hanging out with a kiddo and reading a book to him or something like that. It so, is really easy yeah. to get caught up in that mentality yeah. of I'll be happy once I get this. I'll right. be happy once right. I get this. It's like, nope. Yeah. You can live your whole life like that. Yeah. You live gotta in, live be in the right moment. here. Yeah. yeah, live in the moment. Look around you. You'll see little things that will make you joyous. Yeah, I definitely all the time. struggle with that, but it's yeah. a balance. <laughs> if you don't like it, it's also chocolate pudding day. So have some Whoa. chocolate pudding, and that'll that'll make you joyous That's too. That's some good news here on yeah. this Wednesday morning. I'm full of it. <laughs> I've been told that before too. No, oh. Craig, you're full of it. That's okay. I don't think they were talking about chocolate pudding information. Oh. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right. Moving on to history now. On this day in history, back in 1917, the first troops of the American Expeditionary Force arrived in France to take part in World War I. 
1939, film censors approved the film Gone with the Wind, but they ended up fining the producer $5,000 for offensive language. What, what? The, the language, it referred to Rhett Butler's famous closing line to Scarlett O'Hara, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. That, uh -huh. that was the... Oh, no. I know. Today it's like, yeah, <laughs> what? Yeah, you know? right. So, anyway. In 1974, the barcode allowing for the electronic scanning of prices was used for the very first time. And that first purchase was a pack of gum at a supermarket in Troy, Ohio. Troy, Ohio making major news. History. Yeah. History. In 1977, Elvis Presley performed his last concert. It took place in Indianapolis just two months before he passed away. And in 1990, President George H.W. Bush discarded his famous No New Taxes pledge. He conceded that taxes were needed as part of a deficit reduction package. And in 1997, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone was first published. It was the beginning of a seven-book series that captured the world's attention and also spurred several films and spin-offs. I think Philosopher's Stone is what they call it in the UK. In England, yeah. Right. Yeah, here they call it the Sorcerer's Stone, right? right? right. Yeah. I don't know why it's different, but it's interesting. Know. Yeah. In 2000, two rival groups of scientists announced they had deciphered the genetic code, the human genome. All right, a couple more for you. In 2008, the Supreme Court ruled that the Constitution protects an individual's right to carry a gun for private use, but did nothing to alter the ban on having a gun in sensitive areas, including schools and government buildings. You still can't take them there. Mm. And in 2015, another Supreme Court ruling, this one um, basically gave the states, uh, it said the states are constitutional compelled to issue marriage licenses to same-sex couples, legalizing gay marriage across the nation. I remember when it happened, too. They had some mass weddings around, and just people were so happy yep. about it. So, right. anyway. Right. It wasn't that long ago. It seems like it's been like that forever. But, I know. Yeah. yeah. And today's birthdays include singer Ariana Grande. She is 31 today. Actress Aubrey Plaza is 40. She's one of my all-time favorites. So funny. I love her so yeah. much. And Baseball Hall of Famer Derek Jeter is 50 years old today. We had our choices of birth. Some days there's just not many, but there were, uh, could Too go many on today. and on and These on. These are huge stars. Yeah. Nick Offerman was his birthday today. Oh, I mean, and another so Parks and Rec person Yeah, another Parks and, and Rec. But a lot of other really popular famous people's birthdays today too so well, I like I, the I selection three, yeah so yeah happy birthday hopefully you hopefully you'll find some joy today yes. <laughs> see I'm feeling Have joyous already pudding. wow yeah wow we're getting there yeah okay uh moving on now we could have some thunderstorms. Yeah, I That's... mean, I'm, I'm looking at the bright side on this National Day oh, of Joy. Oh, excuse it's me, gonna I'm sorry. Be, it's going to be <laughs> partly cloudy, so that means we'll see some sunshine. And glass we'll some, half empty, glass yeah, we'll half full. We'll have some full. clouds that will make it not so hot. It will protect yeah. you from the sun's damaging rays. No, the UV rays will probably still be damaging. Shh. <laughs> But at least it'll be shady. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't okay. know. And some thunder showers that will help us help our flowers and, and our food grow. <laughs> wash the pollen Good off my boy. truck. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I haven't washed so. my car in a long it's time. It's gonna rain. Yeah. You don't have to. Wow. Sorry. Where'd that voice come from? <laughs> it's gonna rain. Okay, here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Need the perfect fit for your new summer footwear? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. All righty, here we go. This morning we had some showers that have been passing through. We're going to be pushing those off to the east. We'll get some sunshine going today along with some passing clouds and a few showers and maybe a rumble of thunder could develop as we get some of that daytime heating going this afternoon. But for now, though, here's a big picture. Just some showers developing going from the west and going to the east. We'll be getting nose out of here pretty quickly. Then that small afternoon chance will be greeting us. So future cast otherwise, party cloudy today. There's that chance for a shower or storm later this afternoon. Tonight, mostly cloudy and better chances for showers and storms on the way, especially as we head towards early Thursday morning. As for the winds, though, here we go. They will be increasing to around 50 miles per hour at times. For now, though, we don't have any advisories in effect along the coast. That may change coming up later on today, so we'll make sure to keep an eye on that. So for today, we have middle 80s, party cloudy, a few thunderstorms possible this afternoon with a southwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. So lower 60s tonight, showers and thunderstorms likely with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Some heavy downpours could occur with these storms as well. And for tomorrow, we have scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way yet again. We will have dry hours as well. Highs in the upper 70s and that west wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. The hourly forecast for the rest of the morning and afternoon period showing a partly cloudy sky. Temperatures overall in the middle 80s. A few showers and storms possible during the afternoon as well. Well, your full five-day forecast is coming up.
look at all that sunshine. Yeah. It's going to be a beautiful day. Beautiful day. Yeah. All right. Well, Mainers have experienced a warmer and wetter spring and summer than average, which has contributed to an early strawberry season. Our Callie Warren takes us to Hollywood Farm to learn more. People come in July, be looking for a lot, and um, they may be gone. The strawberry fields at Homewood Farm in Blue Hill are full with ripe, delicious strawberries. About seven to ten days, depends on the varieties, earlier than it has in the past. And farmers say the season is ending much earlier than usual. Um, I think we had a warm spring and uh, with rain and just everything kind of came early. Farm owners say they're hoping to get their crops picked as soon as possible before the season goes to seed. We just have to get them picked and we really can't worry about, like, <laughs> you know, there's no way to save them or hold on to them until that date, but we're hoping to have Still a few for the fourth, we're hoping. Strawberry pickers say the earlier season may be a sign of the times. We've been coming here for the past four years every summer. I think like climate change and all the heat waves and changes in the weather overall, like they've definitely been affecting every aspect of living and strawberries included. If you want fresh strawberries this summer, farm owners advise that you pick them as soon as possible. To get the public in and help us pick them because labor is quite an issue. And um, if they're ripe, they got to be picked. And that's what we're in right now. We've got to get them picked. In Blue Hill, Callie Warren, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Homewood Farms, not Hollywood Farms. I don't know yeah. what I was thinking. Right. You know? There's a lot of strawberry farms around um, the yeah. central main area, so you have all sorts of options. And wow, it's one of my favorite foods, I think. Nothing like getting a strawberry that's warm from the sun. Right. And eating it right there in the field, yeah. too. Yeah. You know? Oh, my gosh. So, yum. Yep, good yum, memories. Yum, yum. Okay, right after the break, Tyler Cruz has our sports updates. Don't go away. There are a million excuses to not wear your seatbelt. But none of them are good because you only have a 50% chance of surviving a crash if you are not wearing your seatbelt. I'm Lauren Stewart, Director of the Maine Bureau of Highway Safety. Remember, buckle up, no excuses. Hi, I'm Barry Gass, and my grandfather started Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear right here in Orono in 1911. Just after World War II, my father ran the business for decades. Now, with my wife and wonderful staff, we are continuing the tradition of bringing the American West to Maine. Our authentic Western boots are handcrafted for comfort, style, work, and casual wear. Saddle up with our premium selection of top quality saddles. Top it off with the perfect hat from classic to modern ranch. Gas Horse Supply and Western Wear in Orono, where the American West comes alive in Maine. Dine on the deck with a delicious view at the Lucerne Inn and Ryan's Pub. Experience outdoor dining at its finest, open Tuesday through Sunday, with award-winning dishes from their executive chef, Arturo Montes. Dining on the deck at Ryan's Pub is an unforgettable culinary experience you'll want to share with your family and friends. We are pet friendly, so your furry friends are always welcome to join you at your table. Your next visit to the Lucerne Inn will feel like the first all over again. Hey, good morning, America. 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 Every day Woo! you're good. Welcome back in, everyone. Thank you for staying with us. Let's start out on the golf course. It was cut day down at Augusta Country Club on Tuesday, and it was another beautiful day for golf, too, for day two of the Charlie's Main Open. To Augusta we go for some round two action of the three-day tournament. Corey Matten out of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina with a beautiful birdie putt here on 11. Tracks it perfectly. He would finish up at six over after two rounds. Staying on hole 11, this is Chris Fosdick out of Middlefield, Connecticut with a terrific approach shot. Chris is currently tied for eighth at two under, and that is a big tie for eighth. We'll get that leaderboard in a second. Max Woodman, an amateur out of Bangor with a terrific punch out here on the 18th hole. He would eventually tap that in for birdie and finish at seven over. Let's check out the leaderboard now. A lot of movement here in day two. Sean Bostosh, still your leader at 10 under. Zachary Barbin, and look at Caleb Manuel, a six under day for him. 
him to bring him to within three strokes of the lead. Zane Thomas is at six under. He's in fourth. Patrick Healy at five under in fifth. Ryan Solano and Jack McGuire at sixth and seventh and a huge tie for eighth at two under. And moving on now, let's hit the lanes. Alex Adams just finished his freshman year at Hamden Academy and is once again going national with his bowling career. His mission goes beyond just winning some medals. Ryan Sudall has more. Being able to bowl in these types of tournaments and having that experience, it's going to help me a lot with my game. Hamden's Alex Adams continues to thrive in his bowling career. The 15-year-old is about to head to not one, but two national tournaments. Just super proud of him and everything. He's put in some, some hours and I hope it pays off for him this summer. Alex heads to Teen Masters in Orlando next week and then to Michigan for Junior Golds the week after. This comes after placing third in the main high school championships. It, it gives you some momentum knowing that I did really good and it, it shows me that I can do good at these tournaments. I just got to put my mind to it and really have confidence in myself to make it there. Alex started bowling just three years ago and averaged a 50 each game. Now that average has nearly quadrupled. It certainly helps that his oldest brother, Connor, is a star himself. You know, he helps me out at, when I'm just out here practicing and I get to watch him bowl, which also helps because I can look what he's doing and try to apply it to my game. In this area, no one else I'd want to bowl with but him, that little guy right there. Now these big tournaments aren't like your typical day at the lanes. The biggest difference, believe it or not, is the way that the lanes are polished with oil. It could be like a tree shape kind of thing or like there could be oil on one side of the lane and not much at the top of the lane. There's like really short patterns with not how much oil gets really tough to uh, compete with everyone. But Alex has done that, placing and winning all over the state, picking up some college scholarship money, and competing on a national stage where there's not many Mainers. He hopes he and his peers are just the beginning. I just like to represent Maine, you know, try to get some more kids into bowling in Maine and grow it more so we can be like the other states and we can have more people competing out in these tournaments. In Bangor, I'm Ryan Sudall, ABC7, Fox 22 Sports. Thanks for that, Ryan. Wishing Alex some luck. Moving on to some hockey on Monday night, the Bruins dealing goalie Linus Ulmark to the Ottawa Senators for two players and a first-round pick. Of course, that means this is now Jeremy Swayman's team. The former Black Bear great is coming off of another fantastic season with the Bruins, including an awesome playoff run. He's just 25 years old, and all indications are he will be locked up to a long-term deal later this summer. Jeremy was here in Maine this past weekend, the old stomping grounds, participating in the Drive 4 Kids Celebrity Golf Tournament, and he reflected on his time in Maine as he's just moved farther south down New England. Couldn't be more honored to call myself a black bear. And just like you said, it's a second home for me now. And every time I come up here, I feel like I'm right at home. And to see the endless support, not only from our black bear community, but also the Boston community, uh, I couldn't be luckier as a human being to uh, have the experience I've had here and, and continue to call it home. All right, let's talk some hoops now. The NBA draft kicks off on Wednesday, and just about a week after securing Banner 18, Brad Stevens spoke to the media for his annual postseason and pre-draft press conference. The Celtics now have a great window to make several more deep playoff runs with the core of Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Drew Holiday, and Chris Stapps Porzingis intact for the next several years with a Derek White extension hopefully coming soon. The Celtics would like to follow the same recipe for success next season as they did this year. Stevens talked about what a key for a repeat title, one, title run would be. You just got to stay true to yourself, be around good people, try to then make sure you all come back ready and hungry and realize it's going to be hard. And so, um, but I see a lot of joy and fun in that challenge too. All right, draft tomorrow and then the off-season work begins. That's all the time we have for sports. We'll be right back after the Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. Your piece of land demands the very best equipment. Kubota Equipment. The number one rated tractor brand for durability and owner experience with professional-grade mowers versatile sidekick utility vehicles and compact tractors that get it done right all backed by unmatched dealer support
talk to your dealer today to schedule a demo. Available at Doors Equipment, 1468 Outer Hammond Street, Bangor. Welcome to the Orno Arcade, your local affordable destination. We want to provide you with the best experience we can without costing a small fortune. Our ever popular nine hole black light mini golf course is a huge attraction. Plus we have the best arcade video games to choose from, including both modern and retro games. The Orno Arcade is an ideal birthday party destination. You bring the cake, we'll provide the entertainment. Call us today to schedule your birthday party event. Every night is pizza night at Dragonfire Pizza from wings, salads, and sides to our specialty wood-fired pizzas. You'll find everything you need to satisfy any craving by the slice or by the pie. A little slice of heaven is waiting for you at Dragonfire Pizza, Mill Mall, Ellsworth. A long-awaited comedic sequel starts filming, an action-packed sequel in the works, and a first look at an upcoming gothic horror flick. It's all in today's Hollywood Nation with Fox's Ashley Dvorkin. Come to me. A fright-filled first look, Bob back in action, and the Coleman's return in today's Hollywood Nation. Oh, I'm like the Crypt Keeper! Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan have resumed their roles of body-swapping mother and daughter Tess and Anna Coleman. Production on the sequel to 2003's Freaky Friday has begun. Walt Disney Studios shared the news along with a photo and video from set. The body swapping comedy continues with Anna now having a daughter of her own and soon to be stepdaughter, all navigating a changing family dynamic. The film is scheduled for a 2025 release. I need to take him out. I was just trying to keep the damage to a minimum. Speaking of sequels, according to Deadline, Bob Odenkirk has closed a deal to return for the action thriller Nobody 2. The original 2021 film starred Odenkirk as an underestimated suburban dad, unleashing secret skills to protect his family after a home invasion. Part 2 is due in theaters August 15th, 2025. He is coming. In today's first looks, is a chilling peek at an upcoming vampire horror flick with the teaser trailer for Nosferatu. The cast includes Bill Skarsgård, Nicholas Holt, Lily Rose Depp, Aaron Taylor Johnson, and Willem Dafoe. The reimagining of the 1922 silent film is written and directed by Robert Eggers. It follows the obsession between a haunted young woman and the terrifying vampire infatuated with her. The gothic tale is in theaters this Christmas. In Hollywood, Ashley Dvorkin, Fox News. That's kind of neat. I'm really excited. The 1970s Nosferatu is one of my favorite yeah. movies of all time, so I'm very excited. Yeah, we'll look forward to that. Mm -hmm. In the meantime... In the meantime, uh, here's Devin Biggs with one final look at our full weather forecast. All righty, thank you very much. Your full weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Need the perfect fit for your new summer footwear? Visit us across from Irving and Newport. All righty, wave heights are down now, just at around three feet according to the buoys out there, five feet, even six feet farther out towards sea, though, to show you that six-foot wave height. There it is right about in there. But for now, we have no advisories in effect along the coast that may change later today with some gusty winds that will be on the way. Water temperatures, though, again, there's still down in the 50s and even some 60s, so if you're thinking about going to the ocean soon, I would exercise some caution with that as the water temperature is still rather cool at this time. We have showers that have been passing through this morning, tracking from the west and going toward the east. We'll keep that going this morning. Later this afternoon, we'll be partly cloudy with a few showers and thunderstorms that may develop again with the daytime heating. But for now, though, this is the energy tracking from the west to the east, giving us some showers this morning. Those will get out of here pretty quickly. We'll get some daytime heating going. Then maybe a little bit more development during the afternoon period. But for now, though, a part of the cloudy sky for most of the day. There's a few showers and storms possible again during the afternoon period. Later on tonight, increasing clouds. Good chances for showers and storms. Locally heavy downpours cannot be ruled out with those either as we head towards Thursday morning. We'll get that through the maybe a little bit more afternoon development on the way yet again as we head towards late Thursday afternoon into the early evening time frame as well. And notice those continue maybe an early Friday morning before those finally begin to get out of here. As for the rainfall in total, again, locally heavy downpours 
downpours can be ruled out, but in general, around a half inch to three quarters of an inch are possible between now and early Friday morning before all this gets out of here. So some decent rainfall on the way for us yet again. Let's talk about some dew points. So again, dew points, not too bad out there. They might be a little bit out there today overall in the lower 60s, sort of slightly humid out there, but notice so later into the day on Thursday, those get back down to the comfortable territory. Now possibly Saturday into Sunday. Here we go again. Dew points back up in the lower 70s yet again. So make sure you're ready for that. But otherwise for today, here we go. Middle 80s, party cloudy. A few afternoon thunderstorms are possible. Some showers could occur as well. With a southwest wind getting up to about 25 miles per hour at times. By tonight, lower 60s showers and thunderstorms are likely. Locally heavy downpours could occur with the wind overall looking nice and calm. Tomorrow we have scattered showers and thunderstorms on the way yet again. Dry hours will be expected as well. Highs in the upper 70s and that west wind at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. All right, let's check out your extended forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes and more. Lots of sunshine on Friday with highs in the mid 70s, lower 70s for a Saturday under a mostly cloudy sky. More showers and thunderstorms on Sunday with highs in the low 80s. Taylor Events and Equipment Rental in Bangor for all your wedding and events. Tents, tables, chairs, and more. Also, see us for your home project equipment rentals. Taylor Events and Equipment Rental, 1179 Hammond Street in Bangor. If you've been in an accident with a truck, making the wrong call can be costly. Evidence and witnesses can disappear. You need to stop that from happening. These are some of the most complicated cases for a law firm. But not if you call one that handles truck cases every day. Call a law firm with the resources, experience, and power to go after every dollar you deserve. If you're hurt in a truck accident, call Joe. The law offices of Joe Bornstein. Maine lawyers working for Maine people. Welcome to 207 Collectibles, your ultimate destination for all things collectible and gaming, where every dream comes true and a little magic is always in stock. Whether you're looking for vintage video consoles or games, Pokemon, D&D, Magic Cards, NASCAR Collectibles, Board Games, or even Funkos, we've got it all. Come visit 207 Collectibles. Your collection is our passion. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This local business would like to wish you a happy Independence Day, along with safe and fun celebrations all summer long. Biden, Trump, watch the CNN presidential debate simulcast live on ABC tomorrow night. And the night starts at 8 Eastern live with the ABC News event special, The Race for the White House, with David Muir and the political team tomorrow night on ABC. All right, finally this hour, a man in Michigan goes viral for saving a choking raccoon. Video posted to social media shows a man patting a raccoon on the back He's while burping a, him like a baby. <laughs> while another man off camera gives instructions. <laughs> Soon the raccoon shakes its head and its body before walking away as the men cheer. It happened June 14th in Burton, Michigan, about 65 miles northwest of Detroit. According to one of the men, the raccoon was choking on a piece of cheese it found in the <laughs> trash from a cookout earlier that night. So they so if it, it was out. a cookout, everybody had probably been drinking for many hours <laughs> and you see this raccoon over there or you hear this noise in the dark and you're like, what is that noise? Yeah. It's a choking raccoon Quit. and they go and save it. Give it mouth to I mouth. love, I love this story. Yeah. Okay, we're about out of time. We'll continue broadcasting on Fox 22. Have a good one. <laughs> Vehicle running a little rough? Let DNS Auto and Brewer fix you right up. Sales and full service repair shop. Running great now. DNS Auto, 510 Wilson Street in Brewer. Building relationships through quality sales and service. Rotor Rooter has served the greater Bangor area and beyond for 35 years, offering plumbing, hydro jetting, snaking, descaling, video inspection, and grease interceptor cleaning services. For all your residential and commercial clogs, call Rotor Rooter today, 990-1234. And away go troubles down the drain, Rotor Rooter. It was like 8 o'clock, and Rick's not home yet. 
I had called his phone and there was no answer. My front doorbell rings. I knew the minute I heard the doorbell, what was on the other side? They knew that Rick was driving eight miles an hour and the brakes were engaged and the person that rear-ended him just wasn't paying attention. Unless you're looking straight ahead, everything else you do is distracted driving. If this could help one family, time well spent. Nobody should have that knock on the door. When RK Variety in Hamden wants to know the local forecast, they log on to foxbangor.com. RK Variety is more than just a convenience store, offering fresh cooked meals that don't break the bank, gasoline for your mean machines, or beer and wine so your night is fine. Stop by today. Your favorite restaurants for half off. It's half off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. Here's this week's featured deal. The Farmer's Table in Corinna brings you outstanding breakfasts, lunches, and dinners made from farm-grown fresh ingredients. Dinner specials are available every day. Enjoy our homemade desserts, and above all, bring your appetite to the Farmer's Table in Corinna. On sale Thursday at 9 a.m., a limited supply available half-off dining from Fox 22 and ABC7. You're watching ABC7 Bangor. Today on Good Morning Maine, a pilot escaped serious injuries following a plane crash on Swans Island. Plus, the dust is settling on the decision to outlaw loitering on medians in Bangor, but some say it's a violation of constitutional rights. And employees of Maine's Gambling Control Board say a hostile work environment has prevented them from doing their jobs. Good morning and welcome to Good Morning Maine. I'm Emma Smith. And I'm Craig Colson. Thank you for joining us. We'll have those stories and a lot more coming up. But first, to check in the forecast, and it's shaping up to be a pretty nice day out there. Uh, partly cloudy day ahead, but we'll see a lot of sunshine too, with just a chance of those thunderstorms later on in the day. We're getting kind of used to that. Yeah, seems pretty similar to yesterday. Yeah. Here's Devin Biggs with the forecast. Alrighty, thank you very much. Your first weather forecast brought to you by Comfort Shoes.